Welcome to video number five. My name is Joel Solomon. I'm a prosperity coach. And my mission is to help at least 100,000 people become financially free. So today we're gonna to be talking about your credit score. But first, let's talk about some statistics, which are quite troubling to me. First of all, your net worth. More families today than ever before have zero or negative non-home wealth. That means if you take out the value of their house, their net worth is either zero or negative. That's more than 30% of the population. Let's talk about debt loads. If you take the amount of debt, so your credit cards, your student loans, your mortgage debt, you add all that up and you divide by income, it's actually more than 100%. Now, for many, many years in US history, from the 1930s to the 1980s, it averaged between 60 and 80%, but since then it went up quite high. In fact, right before the financial crisis, and right during the financial crisis, it went up to close to 200%. Now it's come back down, but still, well over 100% debt to income. Very troubling. So let's talk about your credit score. The distribution by age shows that those less than 621 on the credit score, 38% of those under 30 have less than 621. And only 2% of those younger than 30 have over a 780 credit score. Now you guys know the range is from 600 to 850. So the highest credit score you can get is 850 by the Fair Isaac Credit Organization. And of course the range as you get older, the, the credit score goes up. Now let's talk about credit debt. The average credit card debt is actually $8,000. The median so half people below this number and half are people above this number is $11,000. That's the average credit card debt. And let's talk about student loan debt, which is a very hot topic these days. Those who have more than $100,000 of student loan debt number almost 2 million Americans. Almost 2 million Americans have more than $100,000 in credit card debt. More than 12 million Americans have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, in student loan debt. So let's talk about how your credit score is calculated. It's a secret. That's not a joke. It really is a secret. No one knows exactly how Fair Isaac cover, calculates your credit score, but we have some general information what items they use, and the percentage weights. So here are the five most important factors in your credit score. Next time we'll talk about how to increase your credit score. So the first factor is your payment history. What does this mean? It's just shorthand for the timeliness of past credit payments. If you pay all your credit card bills on time, your payment history has a very high number attached to it. This accounts for 35% of your total credit or FICO score. It's the largest portion of the overall score. And the more late payments you have on your credit score, the lower, of course, your credit score will be. So the goal is to pay on time as much as possible. Outstanding debt, what's this? This is the amount you already owe on credit cards, student loans, mortgage debt. The lower the amount, the better, but ratios are really important. And we'll get into that in the future. Now this outstanding debt, this factor accounts for 30%. So the first two factors, the payment history and the outstanding debt accounts for 65% of the total credit score. The third item is the length of your credit history. This represents 15% of the total of your credit score. So what does that mean? It's just, the amount of time you actually started getting recorded by Fair Isaac. So if you're 21 and you just got a credit card, you have less than a year of credit history. 
and that's gonna negatively impact your credit score. Whereas for me, I have more than 30 years of credit history and that's a positive impact. That gets impacted, that's 15% of my credit score. Now the accounts in use, also known as your credit mix, accounts for about 10% of your credit score. So the more accounts you have in use, the worse your credit score. Although there is a, what I'd say is a, a number that you'll be in balance. Just having three or four or five is fine. If you have 20 credit cards, that's going to clearly negatively impact your credit score. But if you go from three to four or five to six, it's probably not going to have much impact. Now, what's important though, is the presence of many accounts will negatively impact it, but it also depends on the types of accounts that are outstanding. If you have a home equity loan and a credit card and a student loan, that's actually viewed better because the, for example, the home equity loan, you have collateral behind it, your home. So your credit mix accounts for 10% of your total credit score. And then, Finally, the inquiries and new accounts. If you open up multiple new accounts in a short period of time, this will negatively impact your score. Whenever a third party asks for your credit report, that's called an inquiry, and that's recorded by Fair Isaac. And if there are many inquiries in a short period of time, this will negatively impact your score. So inquiries and new accounts together account for 10% of your score. So those are the five items that put together will produce your credit score. Again, we don't know exactly how it's calculated, but those are the factors that go in. So thanks for watching. That was video number five. Video number six, we'll talk about how to improve your credit score. What factors you can use to improve your credit score. So watch that next time. Thanks for watching. I believe in you.